Hi, I'm John McCollum, Chief Marketing Officer of VFM Leonardo, and welcome to the VTV channel. VTV is a weekly series of interviews with industry experts on the latest topics in travel e-business, and specifically online merchandising practices that help hoteliers extract more value out of their online presence. As always, we encourage you to email us at vtv at vfmleonardo.com to suggest topics that you would like us to cover in future episodes. Today I'm joined by Daniel Edward Craig, a hotel consultant and prolific blogger that provides an entertaining insider's look at issues in the hotel industry. Mr. Craig has worked for a variety of upscale hotels, including as vice president of one of the first boutique hotels, which was voted one of the world's top 100 hotels by readers of Condé Nast Traveler magazine. As if blogging in the hotel industry is not enough, Mr. Craig is also an acclaimed author of a five-star mystery series. Daniel, welcome to VTV and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, John. Our topic today is emerging trends in the hotel industry, lifestyle, the new luxury. Uh, you wrote an article earlier this year uh, with an interesting spin on predictions uh, for trends in the hotel industry in 2010. I want to focus specifically on one of the trends you mentioned, lifestyle, the new luxury. In your opinion, how has luxury changed in the hotel business? Well, how has luxury changed? Well, it's definitely shrunk. Uh, the market for luxury hotels has really uh, decreased uh, as a result of the re recession. And, and part of that, um, before the recession, luxury really went mass market. And a lot of people were trading up to luxury hotels that couldn't otherwise afford them. And uh, that led to a lot of debt. Well, uh, the recession corrected a lot of that. So the, the luxury market is back to probably where it should be, uh, a much smaller market, but still a significant one. What exactly is um, a lifestyle hotel? Because you've linked the words luxury and lifestyle together. Yeah, well, I like to joke that um, when luxury became a bad word during the recession, that um, a lot of hotels just, uh, luxury hotels went into their marketing materials and deleted all references to luxury and replaced them with lifestyle. Um, but lifestyle is a lot more than that. And, and lifestyle hotels are essentially hotels that target a specific demographic of travelers with shared tastes and shared preferences and values and income levels. And, um, they really um, are an offshoot of boutique hotels, um, which were um, interestingly started essentially by independent hotels. Um, and so they're the next generation of boutique hotels with some key differences. One of the main differences is um, the lifestyle hotels are really being um, initiated mostly by the big chains. All the big chain properties have um, their own lifestyle brand. Starwood has a loft, an element, uh, Hyatt has a Daz. And so it's a way for them to target more specific demographics and often a younger demographic. And the type of traveler that doesn't want to stay in a large hotel um, that doesn't cater to its lifestyles. So essentially with lifestyle hotels, um, the hotel is an extension of your lifestyle and no longer do you have to leave your lifestyle at home when you go traveling if you like to you know you like hanging out with your dog there's a lot of pet friendly hotels out there if you're really socially conscious uh, more and more hotels are catering to um, eco conscious travelers uh, there's a whole range of hotels that are catering to a specific demographic and certainly when you talk about um, you know, a hotel being an extension of your lifestyle or um, uh, you were also talking about um, hotels catering to people that had shared tastes and, and uh, preferences. And, and, and to me, the word that comes to mind is personality. Uh, but you also used another word in a, in a uh, blog posting that you uh, had and you called, uh, you used the word soul. And uh, you stated that soul is an essential part of any hotel. Yeah, uh, definitely, and particularly of lifestyle hotels. And so it, it's hard to define because it's really the, all the intangibles of a hotel experience. It's the hotel's personality, the culture, the spirit. And a uh, traveler stays at a hotel, it's telling them either, wow, everything just feels right for me, or something was missing. 
You know, maybe I'll try somewhere else next time. Um, it's difficult for hoteliers because you can't, um, it's hard to uh, define Seoul. You can't write it into a manual. You can't put a price tag on it. But it's, it's really essential to cultivate that soul. And that really comes out of the hotel's vision and values and their mission statement and the staff that they hire and making sure that's the basis of everything they do. Now, uh, it's interesting because uh, I've heard many times uh, with, uh, with guests on VTV where one of the biggest challenges for hoteliers is um, the fact that the Internet has... Uh, expanded this problem in the fact that uh, people's experience of the hotel is now starting much sooner than when they cross the threshold through the front doors into the hotel. Um, so as a hotelier that, you know, if I was a hotelier that had a, a boutique hotel or a, ho a hotel whose um, real um, unique def differentiator, if you were, was based on, my, on the soul of, of the hotel. How would I communicate that to travel shoppers during the shopping process? Well, there's a lot of way, ways to communicate uh, soul. Part of it is in um, words, in the, the vocabulary that you use, in, in your tone. Um, a big part of it is visuals. Um, having photos and videos and imagery that really conveys what the hotel is all about. Daniel, do any uh, hotels come to your mind that are doing a, a good job at um, uh, being able to communicate and articulate their soul, if you will, uh, or their personality or their lifestyle um, better than others out there? Well, um, there are a lot of hotels out there that are, are branding themselves as uh, lifestyle hotels. And um, I like to compare it to the uh, boutique hotel um, craze in the 1990s, so, so to speak, where um, suddenly all, a lot of hotels were branding themselves as boutiques after they heard, out, heard that boutique hotels were uh, more profitable than other hotels. Um, and now a lot of hotels are branding themselves as lifestyle hotels. Some are doing it really well. Some are kind of playing lip service to the brand. Um, some properties that I think are doing it really well um, when it comes to eco, a lot of uh, travelers are really interested in, they don't want to leave their eco-friendly practices at home when they go on the road. So they want hotels that are recycling and that are um, limiting their, their footprint. Um, and Fairmont does a great job of um, implementing eco-friendly practices across the chain and they're not shy about promoting uh, their eco-friendly practices. Kimpton also is getting very involved in that. Uh, Marriott, that's really becoming uh, a standard, um, less than a lifestyle. Um, but other more specific lifestyles, I mean, W Hotels brands itself as the fastest growing uh, contemporary lifestyle chain. They do lifestyle really well and they were one of the first. Um, and then there are some really specific examples. Um, well, uh, for example, Joie de Vivre Hotels, uh, which is a collection of independent hotels, um, they like to associate uh, each of their hotels with a particular magazine. Uh, so one hotel caters to the New Yorker type of uh, reader. Another hotel caters to the reader of Fast Company. So they do that really well. Um, then there's really specific hotels. I, I, I just read about a hotel in um, Los Angeles that's catering to, uh, that wants to cater to uh, marijuana smokers, uh, another nudist hotel in Turkey. So the possibilities are endless as long as there's a market for them. And they're certainly differentiating themselves on a single focus. You, you, and, you um, uh, created uh, something called uh, Opus Hotels Lifestyle Concierge. Um, and, and from my understanding, that, that um, uh, was a good instrument to use to be able to uh, convey the soul, if you will, of, of Opus. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how you use that to merchandise the lifestyle of, uh, of Opus Hotel? Sure, absolutely. Well, the idea behind our lifestyle concierge was to create a, an online, a virtual concierge. Um, a lot of travelers, when you stay at a hotel, you, you, Concierges tend to have the same uh, attractions, restaurants, etc., that they recommend to the same guests, regardless of who you are and what kind of lifestyle you live. 
Well, um, at Opus, we recognize that uh, we cater to a broad spe spectrum of lifestyles. And so we created five fictional characters that were actually inspired after the five uh, lifestyle decor schemes at the hotel. And the, our guests can scan these individual profiles and decide which profile, which lifestyle best fits their own lifestyle. For example, there's Billy, and he's a bit of a party boy, a bit of a player. So people who are in town uh, for a good time would probably go with his recommendations. Then there's Susan, who's more into the arts and culture scene, more into fashion. So anybody who's into that will go after her recommendations. And um, Pierre, he's into food and wine. So the foodies, people who appreciate wine, would go after his recommendations. So it works really well. It sounds like a very good example of uh, using customer segmentation and personas to uh, deliver relevant um, experiences to, to guests. Yeah, absolutely. I'd like to think so. Are, are there other industries that uh, you're aware of that we could look to uh, that are also doing this type of, of, uh, of work that, uh, and, and are doing a particularly a good job at it? Well, the fashion industry has always catered to lifestyle. I mean, you know, often ads you see are less about the, the clothing and more about the, the lifestyle. And so rather than selling individual pieces of clothing, they tend to be selling a, a real lifestyle, whether it's a luxurious lifestyle or even a frugal lifestyle. Um, car industry is similar to that. They're selling an entire lifestyle in their commercials. Um, it's interesting, the airline industry, um, they can't really you know, have planes for specific uh, lifestyle demographics, but they do segregate um, individual um, lifestyles or at least income levels on one plane so you know in economy you have budget travelers in business class you tend to have business travelers if there's first class you've got the upscale travelers and then um, now that you know a lot of these planes have suites for the uber upscale traveler Daniel thank you very much